Our family of five is on a quest to experience 110 distinct cultures across all seven continents by the summer of 2025. We're on the penultimate location in our three-week Southwest Asia trip, and that has us here in Peng Lao. But we're not content to just sit on our thumbs all day, so instead, we're meeting back up with our local guide from yesterday and heading off for a day of island hopping through some of the most incredible reefs, waters, and beaches of the Philippines. And we're capping the experience off with a hidden gem back at our seaside resort. So be sure to stick around until the end. Good morning! I am enjoying my coffee right outside of our suite on our balcony that wraps around and has this gorgeous view right over the water. I mean, I feel like I'm right on the water right here. But I'm gonna drink this up because we gotta go. We are starting our water activity all around Bohol right now. After a day in the jungle yesterday, I'm looking forward to spending a day out on the water on a boat. If you haven't seen that episode yet, check it out. You could probably click up here to add it to your queue. They packed us a sack breakfast that we're taking with us on the road. Our transfer is just a 10 minute drive to the dock and then we're on a boat the rest of the trip. We're getting on the boat in Penglao, the city, and we're leaving from their main dock. We were just here last night because we met up with a fellow content creator, travel creator, and he brought us out here. He lives out here. So showed us all around town. We had breakfast right over here. You said breakfast. I said breakfast? Yeah. He said breakfast. Dinner. <laughs> like if he said breakfast. Thank you. Thanks. Here's breakfast. We'll see if we can uh, find dolphins, hopefully. We're getting an early start because sometimes, some days, it can be kind of crowded with other boats and other people out there. But we're getting an early start. There haven't been too many boats that have left the dock here this morning. So it shouldn't be very crowded out there when we're looking at the dolphins. And that's just the first step of what we're doing today. Definitely not the first ones here. Dolphins travel in pods, so there's likely a pod cruising along right there where all the boats are surrounding. So we're trying to get in on that circle so we can see them too. They come out and play in the same area every morning, so they all the boats know where to look for them. They came for us, they came to our boat. Our guide Agnes says there's only a few out today, but normally there are tons. So if you come to Bohol, you might find a lot more dolphins than we are today. But still, it's so beautiful to see them out in the wild because they are completely doing their own thing in their own habitat and we're just observing them. Right, that was a cool little moment, but now we're off to our first destination, which is Balika Sag Island. And we're gonna do some snorkeling and just enjoy one of the most beautiful beaches in the Philippines, let alone Bohol. And this is Balikasag, which means a crab upside down. Is that right? Yeah. Upside down crab, Balikasag. I should mention that this is actually pretty early for us. It's 7.20 a.m. because we had to get the kids up at 5.30. They're still yawning a little. No idea what she's talking about. This is not early for us. That's true. It's not early for Phil and I, but the kids are tired because they're still jet lagged. This is beautiful. This is pretty much the thing to do here after checking out the dolphins out there because every boat that was with us out there with the dolphins is heading in here now. And it's basically a big setup of like restaurant areas. This small island is actually inhabited. They have a school and everything. And it, the population is about 1,000 people. So very small island, but a little community here. And their main source of income used to be fishing, but now it's tourism obviously. A lot of the families that live here have this beachfront living. So these homes right here that they've then built essentially little restaurants onto the front of. And they only serve on this side of the island a portion of the year. And then when the winds shift, they actually move this little operation to the other side of the island. They don't move the housing, of course. They don't move the restaurant and that component, of course. But a lot of the people who live here are actually families, extended families. So maybe the one generation has a house and a little restaurant operation on this side of the island and maybe the parents have one on the other side. So they just move the people, they move the service so that the boats can still make it ashore even with whatever direction the winds and the, the waves are coming from. The children who live on the island who are of elementary school age actually go to school right here on the island and the school that Aaron mentioned 
But once they go to high school, they go to the mainland. And a lot of those are people who have family that lives on the main island, so they go and stay there during the week. And then they come back here Friday after school and get to spend the weekend with their family here. There are a lot of things that have really impacted this community. The typhoon that came in a few years ago, and of course the pandemic really hurt their economy here because the tourism was down. But luckily, tourism is starting to come back full force. So we're hoping that the whole community recovers and we're gonna help them out. She showed me uh, this, there's a real pearl. Ooh. Real pearl, pearl and shell. How about you quote what you get? Make a shark tooth necklace. Nice. So Tintin, can you make the yes. yourself? Yes, I can make it for you if you want. Into my mind, I want the shark tooth. <laughs> Try this one, I, I can give you a good price. Yes, okay. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Tintin. Uh, thank you, bye-bye. We've already mentioned how some of the best scuba diving on the planet is here in the Philippines, and in fact, it's in Bahal. But some of the best diving in this entire area is right here on this island. In fact, it's so good that the government here has built a resort on this island. It's the only one here, and it's just on the other side of the island. The typhoon did some major damage to that resort too, and it's not quite back in action. Uh, a lot of the huts are still really damaged, so they're working on bringing it back. Apparently, it's a really good resort. And again, my dive partner, Reagan, is not with us on this trip, so I'm not gonna be doing any scuba diving. Nobody else in the family is scuba certified just yet, but we are about to head out and do some amazing snorkeling. We are off to find, we're off to the holding area now for our little snorkeling adventure, and I can't wait to get in the water because it is toasty here, and just the idea of jumping into some nice cool water sounds pretty amazing right now. We kind of took our sweet time getting here, so it is getting more and more crowded. Uh, but like Phil said, it is government owned, and so we have to pay a tax to snorkel here. So we're just waiting for our taxes to be paid. I'm the worst. Each one of these boats can carry two passengers, so we're taking two different boats. We have two different guides, and we're already ready. All right, we're already at our first point, which is called Turtle Point, and this is where we're going to look for some turtles. So I'm going to swap the camera over to my goggles. It's funny how some places we go, the turtles are so afraid that the moment you touch the water, they are off like a bolt of lightning. And then other times, like here, they're totally still. All right, now we're off to the real dive spot where we're going to spend some more time in the water. Erin's negotiating with uh, her guide right now to try to get in a place away from some of these other boats. It is crowded. It is crowded. And this is very unusual for our experiences when we do excursions like this. We're trying to go to fewer touristy places when we travel and do more off the beaten path, local kinds of experiences. Nevertheless, it's beautiful, so we're gonna hop in and get some views from this beautiful coral and some beautiful fish. Yeah, it is a little stressful, but we are pushed out a little bit further from the other boats and we're gonna struggle that way. Uh, but we cannot go into the shallow coral area. That's restricted by their government. So we're staying right on the cliffside, which is the best snorkeling because that's where all the activity is. About it or not, that is beautiful water. Still worth the car, still worth the journey. I don't know if you can tell by the awesome footage down there, but Brooklyn borrowed my face mask and had the GoPro on top, so a lot of that is from her. Definitely a very different experience than we had in Quran, where it was totally secluded and private. But I understand why that is such a famous diving spot. The cliffside underwater is really, really beautiful and so active. And Cole said he saw somebody free dive down so deep he couldn't see him anymore. And then a little bit later, he starts seeing the snorkel, the bright green color of it, and more and more you can see that that person was coming back up. But that always blows my mind. I don't have the lung capacity for it. No doubt about it, it's a beautiful place to just sit and chill. So I think we're gonna maybe uh, just wade back into the waves a little bit and wait for lunch to be served. Woohoo! Food! And it looks like their specialty, seafood. We got crab, fish, prawns, and then there is chicken, and looks like this might be pork. And my favorite, the mango, the Philippine mango. So, so delicious. Oh, and there's more, there's more. There's a shell soup. I'm gonna start with that, actually. Oh my gosh, there are huge, huge clams in here. Wow. Every time we've eaten in Bahal, they've only served a fork and a spoon. And we heard that's because when the Spanish took over these colonies here, 
They didn't trust the locals enough to give them knives. So everybody learned to use the fork and the spoon like a knife, where the spoon would hold the food and the fork would serve as a knife. I'm not very good at it, but there we go. Just like that. Voila! I'm gonna try one of these little skewered ads. Yeah, that looks so good. Pork? That is pork. And that is good. It's got a slightly sweet glaze on it. And it's what they were making right back there. We are stuffed and back on the boat, going to a sandbar. I think it's called the Virgin Island. Indeed it is. It's called the Virgin Island. I can honestly say this is the loudest boat I've ever been on. It sounds like a lawnmower from the 70s, but worth it. Can I jump in? So the sandbar is just a little past my knees. Me too. And uh, yeah, Colt wants to go out to the trees that are buried over here. Half buried, I should say. So we're walking that direction. She says that it's pretty high tide right now. When it's lower tide, then you can really walk on it. So if this was low tide, this entire area would have the sandbar above water. And it's about the size of four to six football fields, I would say. And the trees would be completely above water. Colt's in the middle of the trees already. Looks like he's lost in the forest, which he loves. We found a colt in its natural habitat. Look at this. Very curious, that one. Very curious. Oh, it's it wants to show us. It's too small to pinch it. Why don't you hold it? Oh. He can't even pinch it. Attempting to share his prey. I'll share my prey with you. Think the tide might be going out and it is getting shallower by the second here. But there's one area that we see right in front of us where people are literally sitting on their butts. So we're going over here to check that out. Yeah, this is way more shallow than when we first got in. Well, I'm pretty sure we saw all of the main touristy water attractions that Bohol has to offer. We're gonna get back to our resort and do some activities on property there. Brooklyn, don't sit out there, that's dangerous. You could fall off. Daddy, don't be silly, I'm not gonna... Our guide Agnes was great. We had her for two days and we booked her through our resort, the Mitty Resort and Spa. I found this place all on my own and it looked like it was the nicest resort on the island. And a friend from the local told us that it was the nicest resort on the island. But they have their own activities. They have a cave that has a swimming hole in it and it's included with our stay to have a guided tour of it. So we're gonna go check that out now. This will be our first time here, so we're not endorsing anything yet, but it should be pretty cool. And it's walking distance, so why not? Wow, how far away is this? I don't know. Oh, not very far. Uh-oh, Colt said it's freezing. I'm not gonna like that very much. Is it that cold, Brooklyn? It's freezing then. Thank you. Okay. All right, we're on our own. She's heading back. Whoa! This is awesome. This is so yeah. big, it's like a scene from Goonie. And then it's just for us now, huh? But it is cool. Oh my gosh, look how crystal clear the water is. Wow. Woo Ooh, the bath. We're in a bat cave. Oh, there he is, Griffin. Do you want to feel the bath? Yeah, Just come over here. <laughs> non touristy activity that we're doing. Oh my god, it's so Seriously, so cool! Now I feel like we can say that we have been in a Filipino bat cave all by ourselves. Show me. There's my gosh. Show me. That is 100% oh. baby token. Okay, Show me. Get a close up of the big one. Whoa. It always looks like their mouth is bleeding, but look, that's the color of their tongue. Ooh. Do you see that? That's yeah. The color of their I love it. Be careful with them. Well, the resort pool is much, much warmer. This is obviously a saltwater swimming pool, which makes me wonder if the hot tub 
jacuzzi on our balcony is also salt water. If it is, then I just wasted a bunch of time rinsing out all of our snorkel equipment this afternoon. <laughs> There are three different main pool levels and then a bunch of little sub pools that might be hot tub. It's so warm. Ooh, maybe it gets warmer each way. This one's probably about 95 degrees. We're going to check out the third one because it feels like a hot thing. You know how there are different, you know, levels and sections and each of them have a little bit different temperature? Oh, this one's even warmer. Oh, this feels so nice. I bet this one's 100 degrees. What do you think? It's a perfect 100, yeah. As much fun as this is, I think we need to head back, finish up a little bit of online school. And, and work, then... editing, more videos. That too. And then get ready for dinner. We're eating dinner so early because Phil and I skipped breakfast and the kids skipped lunch. And this little drink is so good. This little concoction is called a cooler and it's kind of like a Filipino version of, say, an agua fresca. So just water with some flavors in it. And this one is coconut and pandan. It really is so good. He said pandan is some sort of a, like a leaf that's aromatic. It is nice to eat over the pool and over the water. Beautiful views. The resort has a three star rating. And that's probably because it is a nature resort, which really translates to they don't do anything intrusive to keep the bugs uh, and critters away. So in our room, there might be the occasional bug or lizard, which Colt loves. What do you think? Do you mind it? Um, no, I would say I mind the bugs, except you know why the mm -hmm. cocaine geckos are here? They want to eat the bugs. This all makes sense. This is why Colt's been able to catch so many cocaine geckos here. It adds up. And that's not even to say that the bugs are bad. It's kind of like camping, but with much nicer accommodations. On that note, we're going to head back to our tent. That's so pretty. We were just in bed working and doing school and suddenly we hear this bang bang. Got fireworks now. All right, back inside guys. So we have to leave our room at Mitty Resort and Spa and we're on our way to Cebu. But instead of taking a flight all the way to Manila and then flying all the way back down to Cebu, we're taking a much easier route. Per usual, before we get in the van, Colt's got to let go of a lizard. So cute. All right. Look at him. Cool. 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 Oh, it's, it's adorable. We're taking the Ocean Jet Ferry. All right, we've got a two hour voyage ahead of us. It's gonna be nice and relaxing and that's pretty much it for this episode. So stick with us, make sure you subscribe because we've got another episode coming up when we devour Cebu, crashing the entire city. See you then. With each new community and culture we encounter in our world travels, we look for ways to leave it better than we found it. Sometimes that can be as simple as picking up trash on a local beach or buying goods from locals without bartering for a lower price. Other times, we roll up our sleeves and help serve those in need, like this time. But when some of our viewers started sending us super thanks money through YouTube this month, we were touched and we were inspired to pass that money right back to the communities that are featured in our content. As our channel grows, these gifts could start to have a real impact on the vibrant people they support. For this episode, you can give to a great Philippines charity just by clicking the thanks button below and making your gift. 100% of our proceeds will go directly to the charity. To learn more about that charity and this brand new program of ours, go to followabc.com give. And thank you.